Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to imdb, that's imdb.com, look up two opinionated podcast and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got singer-songwriter Dan Smalley with me. So welcome, Dan. What's up? How's it going? Man, it's going good. I've been listening to your music, and it's pretty good. You got a Thanks, good man. I appreciate you, dude. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah it reminded me of uh, riding around in a car with my dad when I was growing up, listening to country music because he was a country music fan, and it uh, it kind of brought me back to some of that. So it was pretty good. Well, cool with that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Dan, let's start this way. You know, what got you into music? You know, why'd you? Uh, want to go into that line of work the entertainment business is not an easy business to get into truth man my dad was a vocalist in the military yeah so uh i was just kind of in music from a very early age and um i also started playing football at a really early age and um my dad was always like what are you gonna do when you can't play football and i was like i'm just gonna play music like you dad and um that's verbatim what happened that's exactly what happened that's awesome that's awesome did yeah, you man. play uh did you play ball up through college or just through high school man i broke my leg in five places my senior year um the like seventh game of the season uh, i was walking in the end zone on an option man i had a lot of touchdowns that year and a lot of yards and i was i was wanting to go play college ball and had a couple opportunities to to maybe go do so with my buddies and you know sometimes the universe has different plans and um yeah i don't run as fast as i used to <laughs> yeah me either <laughs> i have I a, a, a titanium rod there. and four screws oh yeah come on my how many screws there. four screws in my right leg and five breaks it, in the broken same five. my tibia broke in half my fibia broke in two places and um <laughs> my uh this is my son sorry oh, and um yeah. he kind of that was weird how he fit. Yeah, he was in and out. <laughs> um, and then my ankle broke in two places, and um, oh, they put a rod down the middle of my big bone and two and two screws at either end to kind of hold it in place. It's been there ever since. I had a, a bad car wreck about ten years ago, and, mm. and and had a plate and some screws in my shoulder. I can't mm -hmm. imagine the leg. It took forever for my shoulder to heal. I was walking in like six weeks. Really? Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. 
Yeah, I played 18, man. I healed fast. And I, uh, uh, we, uh, we were going into the state tournament and practicing just on a practice field practicing. And I slid into a base and there was a piece of glass buried Uh, in the dirt and uh, it, it tore my knee to pieces. uh, I I mean, nothing long-term, but I, you know, I had to get stitches and bandages. uh, I ended up missing the tournament and I was like, "Mm." but that that was right at the end of my high school career. So I, I How does a blast end up on a baseball field? I don't know. It's just a practice field, and it was like just mm. a broken piece of glass. It just buried mm. it in the dirt. And I was like, well, all the luck, I would uncover it. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like my luck. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so, so your dad was the – he was one of these uh, – did he travel with the, with oh, the yeah. military to sing? Oh, yeah. Some of the yeah, military born... singers are amazing. Oh, my dad can sing. He's I a good one. I sound a lot like him. Uh, but yeah, no, he traveled everywhere. I was born in Alaska. Then we moved to Alabama and Ohio. Um, Were you in the part of Alaska where it's, you know, six months sunlight or whatever, six months daylight, six months darkness or whatever they do? Man, I don't remember, to be honest with you. I don't uh, I don't remember um, any of it. I was really young. You're young. So. Yeah, I don't remember leaving, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I haven't been back. I'd love to make it back, but I haven't been back yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, after I mean, my dad went to Japan. My dad did an Elvis impersonation so uh, good that they bought him the little onesie suits and flew him all over the world to do like captain's balls and stuff like that. Amazing. And do Elvis impersonation. Yeah, he's a he's that guy, Dan the Man Senior. You sure. uh, oh. you haven't had him uh, sing with you on a song yet. Uh, not recorded. Actually, we did record one. It didn't end up going out. Um, but man, we uh we have sang together at live shows before for sure. I pull him up on stage with me every time he's around. Um, I do a Christmas show in my hometown. Um, that I've made him be involved. He he plays Santa Claus and sings with us and stuff. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, what? we have a very very cool relationship now. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Did um. Uh, did I see that you you've been touring in Europe? Yeah, man. Um, I got to go to uh, Glasgow. Yeah, Belfast. Um, hold on one second. My son is playing baseball against the garage wall. Hold on. One <laughs> well, I can't hear it. If that helps. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's all right. That's all right. I came from. Uh, watching uh two of my grandsons and they're and they're okay. pretty young they're younger than your son but they uh uh they can get a little rambunctious you gotta you gotta calm them down once in a while <laughs> yeah he just got home from school so he's rec- rearing and ready yeah to he's go. yeah he's all, uh, he, he's been sitting all day he's ready to go yeah they have testing and stuff going on what were we talking about <laughs> we're talking about touring <laughs> in europe oh yeah that's right i went to um glasgow then belfast and then all over england i went to uh newcastle york uh leicester uh Birmingham, have you ever been over there before Manchester. maybe with no, your no not to the not to england and and scotland and ireland and all yeah. that i've been to denmark so i ended the, the tour in denmark on a, on a solo run and um i love denmark didn't Den- i'm yeah I'm, Absolutely love Denmark. How, how's uh, how does Europe uh, take to country music? You know, they really. I feel like they just love um, any kind of music. Really, all the all the good music. It feels like, um, and really authenticity. I feel feel like if you just get up there and you give them everything you got, they're gonna give it right back to you. Yeah. Um, and that connection is really cool because you don't always get it in the United States. Um, and, and I don't know, maybe we just got lucky with all the rooms we were in, but every, everybody that came to those shows were there to, to be at the show yeah. and be a part of the show because and I don't know, that's, those are the best ones when everybody is just very into what's going on on stage. Oh um, yeah. It makes the whole thing just, uh, just, mean a little bit more you know what i mean you probably go away remembering something like that opposed to something that you talked through the whole time and, uh, we do have a tendency here in the states to to be a little distracted even yeah. in shows because everybody's so worried about capturing something on their camera or whatever they're they're almost not paying attention to what's you know they're not interacting like a normal audience would if they weren't you know also on their phones yeah it's a different thing um 
it's I don't know, but those were also all you know ticketed shows. So people paying to okay. pay money to come see shows, um, they show up and they want to see it, and it, it was so beautiful, man. I loved it. I'm going and, back. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, going back in like three or four weeks, um, to Manchester for a festival, and then back to Denmark in June for a festival. I think I'm hitting up Sweden and Switzerland too this trip. Um, and so I'm I'm just absolutely over the moon about how much um the uk is loving on me right now <laughs> yeah do you uh do you have to learn some phrases in different uh, languages for what oh, i have some yeah i have my danish phrases i've learned a handful at this point so it's it's getting uh, it's progressing um as far as like what i can say on the microphone that's a hard language <laughs> it's one of the hardest man those people <laughs> like i i cannot understand half the things that um that i'm saying to be honest i don't even i don't feel like i'm saying my vowels correctly um but they have a few more than we have too so it's just a lot man it's like yeah. e's and e's. Yeah. <laughs> well it's just and, speaking of extra a's they have a lot of extra a's in there mm-hmm. extra o's o's yeah, yeah they, they have a double o they got an o with a line through it they got a double a thing that's like a turned around backwards and on another i mean it's a lot bro. in characters <laughs> it's a lot man <laughs> Just trying to read road signs. It's like, wait a minute, what does that say? Um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to drive over there. I'd, I'd definitely have to get a driver. No, nah, talk is thank you. Like, um, so like talk vadi you will come in means thank That's you good so one much. To know. Thank, thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, yeah so igleo for uh, wherever I am. So I'm so glad to be uh, in inter city name. You say that pretty well. I've been I've been I've been working on it, man. So like five. Five trips now, six trips. I think was a uh, is where I'm at um, in Denmark. But they obviously so, uh, enjoy having you over because they keep bringing you back. I'm getting where you fit in, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Have I'm you okay uh, you done any of the festivals here in the states? I have. I've done. I have had a couple like um, early slots at like Faster Horses, mm-hmm. um, the Country Fest up in I think it was Wisconsin. Is it? Is yeah, really yeah. I think it? you're right. I think that's where it was. Um, and then, uh, like the Frank Brown Songwriter Festival is. Uh, oh, where's that one, one at? That one's in um uh, at Florida. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. songwriter festivals um around. It's just like where all the all the old country music music legends used to hang out in uh, Florida. Bama. Anyway, um, but that's really it. So I'm kind of new at the whole uh, United States. Really, all the festivals. I'm I'm really new at it. Um. But uh, I hope all that gets a little busier when this record comes out. And, uh, oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. So you've got a single out now, right? Uh, Can't leave wrong enough alone. Yeah, that's the newest one. That's uh, the newest I'm... one. It's and we we really enjoyed this one. My wife and I listened to it. She already put you on her uh, her playlist, so I'm sure oh, you hear your you. music all the time. Tell her thank you so much. Oh yeah. Now, I walked in that right with Skip Black and Philip Lamons, and I had just listened to. Um, sweet emotion by aerosmith oh yeah and i was like y'all how do we like do that um how do like the intro of it specifically is where my head was like how do we capture that like feel and that like see now i hear that vibe now that you said that now i can hear it yep it's definitely there it's just a little more country yeah <laughs> yeah that's all it, it's a great song what's the uh what's the story behind the song what's what's the song about Ah, you know, it was really one of those that we just started making shit up, to be honest with you. And everything that we said just happened to like mirror my childhood and like me growing up and like me stealing packs of cigarettes from my parents and like me grabbing the keys to my stepdad's truck and just rolling out. You know what I mean? I was that that just shithead little kid. And all through my 20s, I spent just like learning lessons the hard way and um, not being able to just leave wrong enough alone most of the time, knowing better. No, no, oh, yeah. can, you know, well enough, like, but not being able to, to leave wrong enough alone. Is basically you, usually you get, uh, you get cured from that when you have kids of your own. Man. Yeah. Kids really helped me. You yeah. know, the last time, last time I drank alcohol, I got shot in the chest and the arm with a 40 caliber pistol. If you really? Seriously? Get, you want to get weird. Yeah. How long ago so, was that? 2014. <laughs> well, so you get shot in the chest you wouldn't think you'd still be here how did you survive that yeah it was a it was a tricky situation i um i was blacked out drunk it was my like a couple nights after my 29th birthday i played a show and um the story is i couldn't get in my my house so i just kicked the door down and it was not my house and the man that owned the house 
the man that owned the home shot me with a 40 caliber pistol in the chest and in the arm. I was pronounced dead on the scene. And then they said in the ambulance, I just kind of sat up and was like, what's going on? Take this stuff off of me. And they're like, sir, you've lost enough blood to die. We need to get you. They're like, took me to the hospital and saved me. Um, but I woke up in the hospital with zero clue how I got there and was just like, hey. Well, that would change your on? how you're going through life. That would definitely make a change. Completely. Completely, bro. Completely. Like I said, I spent most of my 20s running off the rails. Finally ran hard enough, and God slapped the shit out of me. And uh, <laughs> Ever since then, man, I've been good, though, to be honest with well, you. Well, like, that'll I do have, it. Yeah. Like, I removed like, alcohol you, from the equation. You're out there, and, you're, and God doesn't think you're listening. He's like, well, maybe I'll just make my point. <laughs> he made it. Yeah, he made it. He I'm made glad it you're still here. That is uh, terrifying. You know, that's the second – you're the second person I've interviewed who that has happened to not the shooting part I don't just going into the wrong place because mm -hmm. you're you're too drunk to realize it's not your house luckily he wasn't shot but he got yeah. the crap beat out of him yeah that happens too yeah yeah the more i tell the story the more people come out of the the woodwork and be like hey i know a guy or hey i woke up everybody knows somebody that's done complex. yeah it's crazy in europe though because they hear the story and they're like what you were what? We can't even imagine like shooting somebody because you know I don't have guns, but yeah, but just because you were drunk and went into the wrong, they're just like so flabbergasted that they're just like, We're so happy you're still here. But I like, know that's an a that's a crazy story to people. It, it is a crazy story. <laughs> people in the US, they're like, Whoa, dude. But people out of the US, they're like, Oh my god, that's absolutely insane. You know, it's when like, when I was in high school, the uh You've probably heard of that game tag, oh, where, yeah. where everybody has like a uh, like a Nerf gun or something. But oh yeah, you draw names and whoever's name you get, you're supposed to go and shoot them. And then if you shoot them, you take the name that they have and you go like that until there's only one person left. Mm -hmm. Well, we were playing that game off of, out of school, and there was mm -hmm. people breaking into other people's houses. To get them with this Nerf gun. I, I And looking back on that, I'm like, how did somebody not end up dead because they're breaking into somebody else's house? And it was all in fun. Mm. But somebody's parent probably wouldn't know that. Different you times. Probably 13, 14. You were young. But yeah, different times back then, too. Different man. times. I can, I can remember just walking up in my best friend's house, like not even at, knocking on the door and like. Oh, yeah. I've done that. Yeah. Evening time, just like walking but up, like, what's be, up, guys? And they're like, oh, yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah, it used to be people just leave their doors open or yeah. unlocked at least. And Man, if you so, were in the neighborhood, you didn't really, it didn't occur to you to knock. You just go on in. Yeah, so if you go to my YouTube and you watch the music video for Accidentally Drunk, um, it kind of tells the story of a guy getting drunk progressively through the night. And then if you make it to the end of the video, he's going to get in his house. He can't get in, so he kicks the door down and gets shot. And then Mr. Jerry's ghost tells the story of what happened the next day. And that is an absolute true story of, of what went down. Uh, Mr. Jerry passed away of a cardiac arrest not long after. Um, but first thing he said to me was, hey, man, I'm usually a better shot. Um, I, got, <laughs> I ended up spending a couple of weeks in the hospital when I got out. It was Thanksgiving and my family was very mad at me. Everybody was just very pissed off. And so. I made my own Thanksgiving dinner and stayed at home and I walked across the street and, and took Jerry a plate and apologized and was like, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I, he, he opened the door and said, you're the guy. Huh? I was like, yeah, I'm the guy. And he's like, you know, I'm usually a better shot. And I was like, yeah, well, I'll do respect, sir. You hit me twice. Um, I'm sorry for, for putting you in that position. Well, he was probably that. amazed that he even saw you after that. Yeah. He was like, you're really, really lucky. Like you're a very, very lucky person. I was like, you know, it, I agree. And why it all happened, I don't know. Hopefully something good comes what out of this. What a story, though. Yeah, man. So I've been doing good ever since. Almost 10 years now of uh, sobriety, and me and my wife are still married. And my kids are – my little girl had just been born. My son happy was – Happy ending. You know, yeah, it's a happy ending. It's a pretty cool story. Um, And uh, that's just – that's what I wanted to tell in this record, kind of this the story of this this crazy guy and what he went through and and how it's how it's going. You know what I mean? So well, the uh, best part about that story is the happy ending. You're still yeah, here, yeah, you yeah, know, and you've yeah. got a family, and now you can <laughs> sing about all this nonsense that you were doing. <laughs> that's right. 
Makes for good stories, man. Makes good. for good country music, especially. That's right. Good lyrics, <laughs> good country, country songs. <laughs> so I'm assuming that um, the plan is to to release a new album. Do you have a new one coming out? May 10th, the whole record comes out. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the name of the album? The State of Country Music. Does it have a meaning? To, you know, are you are you making a statement about country music right now, or is that just the title? Yeah, the song the song itself is just kind of about me and whatever state of country music I might be in. The statement itself, uh, as a whole statement, kind of says what it says, kind of what it needs to say. In my opinion, there's a, I don't know, a lot of crazy stuff as far as like what's considered country music these days. And um, it, it's and putting it all a little bit, you know, putting it all together in the same basket. It hasn't always really made as much sense to me. And, and it wasn't until I got Nash to Nashville and saw like how forceful they were and and the production of everything and how you were to either include these elements in there or not. Are you? And so like trying to navigate within that atmosphere to me was a little maddening because I was like, I just want to make country music. <laughs> um but um, not to take away any kind of production elements that might have come forth in now, in 2023, 24, you know what I mean? Wherever we're at, I, like, I wanted it to sound current. I'd never wanted to make like a 90s throwback uh, right. tribute record, you know what I mean? As much as I love those those records and that, that country music, um, I always wanted to come here and kind of create my own sound. And um, just seeing the, the waters get so muddy and murky and, and, and green and purple and like whatever color they wanted it to be was just like, all right, I don't I don't know if I fit in with any of that. So right. um, I'm just going to stand out here on the outside and kind of try to do my thing. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, Beyonce said it best. Or I don't know what she said but other than putting out a country record. I, to me, I think she's saying, hey, you came and took over my genre. I'm here to take it back. If this is what's popular now, I'm Beyonce and I'm popular. Like we can yeah, either I call, think that was either call the story behind that. I'm pretty sure that's what she's saying. Is like, and that's where I'm at. You know, there's popular music and then there's country music. In my opinion, um, it's cool that like that. some country music has gotten popular. Um, it is not cool, in my opinion, that they've now capitalized on the popular music genre and completely transformed it into something that they now own and control and so it's just it is what it is man it makes it hard for a country boy to come here and try to sing country music when you got to keep up with pop singers like, yeah i get that i actually get, and that's that's kind of what i meant when i was telling you it uh it gave me that kind of um those old feelings i had when i was growing up listening to country music and it's it just had that uh it had that feel to it you know, good, I, you. I think your music sounds very uh, original and it's good. Thank you. Uh, really good. But it has that kind of old school country vibe to it that uh, that I connected with. And I, I thought that was uh, uh, really good. And that's, you know, listening to, to what you're saying about how country music has changed, then that's probably the feeling I'm getting because mm -hmm. you're you're not following that trend of that country pop that we're getting you're you're mm -hmm. you're more of a, a country guy and i i think that's whatever great. it is sounds good thank you man i appreciate it i love steel guitar um i love acoustic guitars i love jerry reed i love uh freaking train beat you know what i mean i love all of those elements of country music and um i don't know to me there there are guys out there that are absolutely waving a flag of country music and i yeah. love those dudes to death and i pull them for them but they're not the ones being elevated uh, to the top of the genre um, which is, which to me is weird. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I think that's weird. Who, uh, who were you listening to growing up? Oh, growing up, man. I listened to like George Strait and Alan Jackson and, uh, and Randy Travis and those guys, a lot of Merle Haggard and George Jones and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, and Jerry Reed, ton of Jerry Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I liked hearing you say Jerry Reed. Cause we listened to a lot of him uh, growing up. Randy Travis has always been yeah. my favorite singer. I, yeah. I, it kills me that he's not singing anymore. Um, Man, yeah. His voice is so unique. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I mean, all of the all of those guys back in the '90s were just so awesome. Joe Diffie, Aaron Tippin, Neil McCoy, like all all those guys that were just so original. And like you heard them, and you knew exactly who it was. It was like, man, I know, I know who that is. Because, voices, absolutely, and you could yeah. tell them apart. And it's, I don't know, something. I I totally understand the corporate 
capitalistic mentality of just I mean, regurgitating, <laughs> regurgitating the same thing over and over again and making more money. I totally get it, but I feel like we're losing something when it comes to just the ultimate creation of art. And yeah. for the sake of art, like for, for like elevating something because it's great, not because of who wrote it and who's attached to it monetarily. Like it's just, yeah, one I agree with that. it's ah, state of country I, music. I don't think we're getting, um, in my opinion, as good a uh, songwriting as we used to either. You know, I, I don't think that the lyrics are as good as, as in my opinion, what I grew up on. Man, I feel like it's just is a place for everything now and um and that's okay i'm totally all about like inclusion and and you know and and having every, everything there's have enough its, room for everybody yeah totally as long as everything has its place then and and you know it just is what it is uh as far as good and bad lyrics go man i could not tell you the difference <laughs> i've I do not know. I, I I write what I feel like connects yeah. to me. You know what I mean? What I, I what I think is cool. Um, and, and something I, I write what I feel like I've never heard before. You know what I mean? Or or I've never heard it said like that before. Um, so writing is so just uh, opinionated. Like it is. Yeah. If, you know, it's just. When did just you word. when did you figure out that you could write a little bit? Man, I started writing little ditties when I was like nine or ten years I old. I, I had a feeling it was young. Yeah, just making stuff up, man, and being around music for so long, my whole life, I've just always been making up music. Um, and uh, it's easier when you're just free to like wake up and create. Um, it's harder when you got work like a day job and try to fit it in the weekends or or take a day off or whatever. Um, so the move to Nashville was absolutely um, a necessity for me yeah. to continue doing what I, what I needed to do. And it wasn't until after I got shot that me and my wife were f- and a year of being sober that my wife was finally like, hey, you need to go to Nashville. You need to. Oh, good for her. That's very supportive. She's extremely supportive. She works. She's now SAG after she works now uh, down on the row with me every day. So <laughs> um, it's one of those things where uh, we couldn't be happier where we are. But the move was definitely necessity to nashville simply because the creative uh yeah. the creativity in this town is just unreal yeah it's man. crazy and the level of uh talent is through the roof i'm pretty sure it's the mecca of the music of the world in me as far as music is concerned right now like the best of the best i feel like are in our backyard they're all around nashville right now yeah and i if agree they're, and if they're not living here then they're they're working here a lot yeah. I mean, yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's pretty great from a fan's perspective because there's Crazy. some good stuff coming out of there. Man, there's some good music coming out these days. It's everywhere, to be honest with you. Um, there's a lot of music, too, so it's just extremely saturated right well, now. Well, yeah, it's kind of like um, TV right now. There's there's a lot of really good stuff out there, but there's a ton of stuff, and a lot of it's just, you know, junk. Yeah, a lot of it is just that thing it is that, it is what whatever. Uh, what instruments do you play man i play i consider myself a singer <laughs> and a songwriter <laughs> um i play the guitar i do not consider myself a guitar player um i play a little bit of all the instruments i yeah. can i can sit here on my computer and make a little a little little music in uh, in the box and uh i love to produce i love to um to create you know new work tapes and things like that but i also love to get a band in a studio and, and with a great engineer and um and make like that's how we did our record it was just me and my band and a, a, an amazing engineer and a slash co-producer and um we just I recorded 12 songs in two days and um that's a decent I, sized album yeah for sure it's 13 songs now we ended up adding one but i played the all the acoustic guitar stuff on there um so i was i'm I'm a okay enough guitar player to make it on my record. And I feel like, I don't know. I feel like without it, it wouldn't be my record, if that makes sense. And that's how I've always felt. Yeah. That's how I've always felt with all the music in I've made in Nashville is like, it sounds like everybody else because it's, this, it's a lot of the same guys playing it for everybody else. And I totally understand the machine and get it, but like, I want to sound like myself right. and I don't want to learn that guy's licks. Um, 
I just want to make my own licks. That way they're mine. And everybody knows it when they hear it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, unless it's the co-writer's lick, which that happens a lot too. Um, I write with good guitar players. so it's. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I play a little bit of everything. I went to school a little bit for music production. Um, yeah. I play the saxophone from third grade. Really? Yes. Yeah, so I, I play a little bit of everything, man. I try to just like stay in my lane, though. I'm a singer. Are you like, you know, the guy from Lost Boys saxophone player? Mm -mm. Or just the casual saxophone player? <laughs> I'm the casual break out some Kenny G maybe every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Play play the Pink Panther uh uh intro like me and my son played the uh the uh, the solo part to a uh, rocking around the christmas tree at my show this year oh that's he's, cool he's playing but he can too. play a little bit yeah he can blow man he's good um so yeah yeah man i, I play a little bit of everything um uh, but you, you know when you grow up kind of in a musical family like it's just this is what you do it's that's right fun. that's right yeah that's that's right when uh you know i come from a musical family i just didn't get any of it yeah, like I get all that my thing. aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, they're all involved. We were, uh, my uh, grandfather was a uh, Baptist minister. So it Come was on, around okay. the church, but everybody played an instrument and sang. Yeah. And then I, I was it. always like, why did I not get any of that? Apparently, because <laughs> I, I got, you know, podcasting. I was like, well, that's I, okay. You got I, something. I'll take that. I'll take that. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I figured out I like to talk. So there you go. Yeah, you know, doing that prepared. all day is not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse ways to make a living. <laughs> this is so true. I've done most of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. So so the album's the state of country music. Is it a um, are you are you releasing an actual album or is it more like an EP? Oh no, it's a whole record. 13 songs. Um it's gonna be on vinyl and stuff. It'll Ooh. be a, yeah, it's, yeah it's, vinyl's it's, making a comeback. It's pretty nice. You know, I don't, I don't know. I have a record player and I play records for sure. And then play music on my phone and then in a the car. So I feel like it's just another avenue to listen to me. I think it sounds cool to be honest with you. I think it sounds real warm and, and it, it takes me back. It's nostalgic. So it's like, I just think it's cool right now, man. Who knows where music will be in 20 years from now. We'll probably just be have it downloaded straight to our brain somehow. Um, and we'll be walking around listening to our own soundtrack. Just, well, you know, when nobody... I was listening to uh, country with my dad, and this back in the yeah. 70s, we were listening to eight tracks. Let's go. I remember you eight know? tracks. Eight sure, tracks. Yeah. And then it went to cassettes and then CDs. But I think my first eight track listening was Conway Twitty for sure. In my Oh, that's a good one. Mine was uh, Johnny Paycheck. Okay. Yeah, let's go. That's eight track tapes. I know people still have eight tracks put in their cars. Just yeah. for, I don't know why. I do, that's I learned to drive on a 1975 station wagon that had an eight track. Let's go. So I listened to all of that stuff, and there was some other stuff: Donna Summer and Stevie Wonder, and you know, I love some Stevie of those. And all this, you know, I had a lot of disco in there. It was the 70s, but man, Ray Charles, Al Green, Ooh, Ray Charles, um, yeah. Marvin Gaye, all those dudes. Uh, yeah, I love were, Marvin Gaye. I just anybody I with that type of voice, you know that. Uh, yeah, soul music, man. You soul it. music, yeah. If you grew up Southern Baptist, you love soul music. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> it. Well, that's also the reason I think I, I love Randy Travis so much because he yeah, sung a lot of good. gospel and stuff. So it's soul, man. It's soul music. You feel what he's singing, like you hear it in his voice. You feel it. Yeah. Yes, man. That's that's. Those are fun uh, concerts to go to too because you connect with the singer you know because there there's so much emotion there and the audience kind of connects with it those are fun concerts yes man it's beautiful I'm, I'm betting that you're similar to that when you're on stage i'm betting you put a lot of emotion into your singing yeah man i love to be on stage i really do love performing live music and playing live music and um i feel like the only way to connect with the audience that has probably played paid some good money to come see you um is to absolutely give every bit of what you have to them and and feel like you have to feel what you're doing up there or everybody can see that you don't um and i'm not a fan of going through the motions so yeah i, I get up there and i try to connect in the um most genuine way that i can possibly connect yeah. um just authentically just me uh no lights and mirrors or anything like that my solo shows are just me and a guitar um 
And I, just, I, I love to live there, to be honest with you. I love yeah. being in that place. And I feel like I connect more in that place than I do with like a huge band on a huge stage in a fat festival, to be honest with you. I love those shows too. They're fun. And my music is high energy and of and fun like that. But man, I love a theater with a thousand people. Um, yeah. Cause it's so intimate. Yes. Yes, bro. Yes. Yeah, There's something awesome. real special about those shows that um those are those are my favorite places to play. Yeah. Will you be uh I know you're going back to Europe. Will you be touring the US too this year? Man, I have a few shows lined up um uh, and a few more popping up here and there. So yeah, I'll be around. Um I don't know if I have anything in West Virginia yet. I was gonna say there's yeah. one in June, Mountain Music okay. Festival. That's the one you need to look at. Okay, it's probably already booked, and I'll be in Denmark, I believe, in uh, for in yeah, yeah. Sweden. Maybe next year. Most of June. Maybe next year. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I would love to make. Uh, I don't. Any... I don't normally go to that one, but my wife goes every year because it's um, you know, it's one of those that you camp at. So so. The oh yeah, I've heard that. All weekend, and then you know she'll go and and camp and uh, spend you know three or four days out there and loves it. She, she That'll be a blast. That year. Yeah, it's a blast. She's I I don't normally go because she takes uh, our daughter and that's mm -hmm. kind of their thing. So I just let them kind of go. But she loves it. Has a blast at it. You know, one of my buddies uh, who co -wrote, actually coincidentally co wrote uh, the state of country music with me. His name is Will Jones, and he's I believe he's from West Virginia. And he's really? A bad, he's a bad mamma jamma. Yes. Um, if you hadn't heard of Will Jones yet, you need to look this. I'm gonna guy look him up. I wrote it down holy hell he's one of the best guitar players i've seen he, he sounds like marty raven he sounds like will jones he's absolutely a phenomenal artist that everybody needs to know about and i've been singing the praise of will jones but yeah he's from west virginia i believe and then my buddies the davidson brothers are from west virginia oh, yeah, too we, man. the uh, uh i'm in a little town called st albans it's just uh -huh. outside of charleston and and we put a uh festival on every mm -hmm. summer called yak fest it's okay they have they, we're the, we're just this little couple thousand people in the town but they have the biggest kayak festival in the country uh, right here yes. God. And so they do a yak fest on main street which is yeah. uh that's where our um our uh, podcast studio is at too amazing and and the davidson brothers the last two years have been the headliner for oh that's amazing yeah. so we had number four in australia i wrote a song that they cut called um unbreak you yeah I yeah i know that one yeah. yeah okay yeah that was one me and uh james leblanc wrote oh that's uh, awesome yeah i have to tell my wife that because she'll invite you down come on i would love to come it would yeah, be yeah. amazing what yeah when you're in, in country we'll invite you down have you come to yak fest anytime yeah, you, i thought there was like uh yaks running around maybe yak <laughs> no it's kayak <laughs> oh yeah i get it <laughs> So the kids are out here playing basketball now and beating up the garage door. If you hadn't heard, I should probably, I should probably. Yeah. Yeah. Out. We better, we better wrap up. It's time. I appreciate you so much though, dude. Seriously. Oh yeah. This has been great, Dan. Um, couple quick or, or one quick thing before I let Come you on. know. Um, where can we find you? Where can we find the music on uh, social media? Yeah. WW. I'm sorry. www.dansmolleyofficial.com. Uh, uh, the music is on all of the digital service providers. Um, it will be out May. The whole record will be out May 10th. Half of it's or almost half of it, like six songs are already out there. Uh, we started releasing singles in July last year. Um, and so this is the completion of the releases and I'm getting bombarded yeah. in here. Hey man, um, I appreciate you. And, and when, when you get another big thing out, come back and see us. Let's talk. Some would stuff. love to. Absolutely, Michael. We love. All to. right, buddy. Hang on one second. Hope you enjoyed that one, Dan Smalley. Um, terrific singer. I, I absolutely love his uh, his sound, and it's unique. Uh, but it reminds me of listening to uh, to all of those singers we brought up from uh, from the eighties and the nineties. Just terrific. I really, really enjoyed it. Hopefully, we can get him to come through uh, uh, the Mountain State. Uh, we'd, we'd enjoy having him here. Um, and maybe we can bring him back at some point. Uh, the song that's out currently is Can't Leave Wrong Enough Alone. I thought he did a great job explaining that one. What a, what a story. Um, and then the album that comes out, I believe, on May the 10th, is the state of country music. Do yourself a favor. Um, check Dan out. You will not be disappointed, especially 
if you're a country music fan. You don't have to be. The music's that good. But if you are, you're really, really going to enjoy it. Thank you, guys. If this is your first time finding us, appreciate you so much. Would love to have your support. So I want you to come back. A couple easy ways you can do that. They're both free. Um, our YouTube channel. YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please just subscribe. It's free. Really helps us. I mean, really helps us out. So please subscribe. YouTube, MeisterCon Pod. Our website is MeisterCon.com. Um, you can find all of our um, interviews, our episodes, audio and video. Uh, let's see. Today we released 700 and our 769th episode. That's, that sounds like a lot. We're pretty high volume. We tend to release about four episodes a week. Um, I would put our list of guests up against any other podcast, talk show, anybody. I, I think our guests are amazing. You know, you have to put up with kind of a mediocre host, but the guests are outstanding. <laughs> uh, IMDB, which is the entertainment database, um, recently named us a top 100 podcast. There's 15 million or so podcasts out there to make anybody's top 100 list. Pretty amazing. If you go to imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast. Just bringing up the page helps us out, but it'll also give you a, uh, a list of all the guests we've had on the, uh, on the show. There's been 800 or so, um, so far. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.